I'm not going to miss uh, any. Uh, I'm not going to miss a minute of ice time uh, as long as they're playing like this because the, this you got to take this in into the moment right now and you got to love every single minute of it. And I know that we're going to end up talking about Frankie Montas and the Yankees. Their season's over. Nobody cares. They're all so, over uh, already. Yeah, it's done. They're it's done. done. They're done. Over. Forget Frank it. Sucks. Yeah, wow. I mean, you said it. I mean, why are we even talking about it? Yeah, the season is over. I mean, a guy <laughs> hasn't even put a ball in his hands and he's already on the operating <laughs> table. I mean, what do you want to do? I mean, it is what it is. It is. I mean, I, I know it seems like the sky is falling now already for Yankees and for the Yankee fans and everything else. So I might as well just say, why even play this yeah, year? Yeah, really. I mean, it's going to be such a long season. It's really right. g- give the guys a year off. You know, and they've I, earned it. Right. And I have to say that between what happened last night with the Knicks and the Rangers back to back was like, wait a minute, timeout. Well, what the hell's going on here? The world's flipped upside down. Things are happening. Like the Knicks were unbelievable last night. Start to finish. They got out to a fast start and they finished strong. And that was great. Uh, the Rangers, man, I'm telling you, I, I like I'm watching hockey like I don't really ever remember seeing before. Maybe when Pavel Bore was here. I don't know mm. if you remember that name. Of course, I remember. He Pavel got Bore here all of a Vancouver sudden. Goal started going in left and right. And, yeah. And then he got hurt and uh, he didn't last very long here. But I have to say. This morning I wake up, I'm tired, but I'm happy. I'm very happy. But I know we're going to spend an inordinate amount of time discussing Frankie Montas. <laughs> well, Frankie Montas is hurt. He is that's done. Right. He is no longer right now a, a part of the present baseball team that is known as the great New York Yankees. Mm, the underachieving New York Yankees. Better it happened now then a week into the season, at least now they can try to figure out what the replacement possibilities are, how much money will they spend, can they make a trade, all of those different attributes of or, or uh, I guess assessments of what's going on right now. So, I mean, I, and then the whole thing with Jacob DeGrom. I mean, none of us are surprised. No. I mean, oh, I, I, I don't know yesterday. what the left side tightness is. I have no idea what that is. I, I have no, these things come out of nowhere. Yeah. At least I know with Montas, he's got a, a problem in his shoulders, most likely a, a you know a rotator cuff. So he's done. I, I don't even want to mention his name anymore because he's not going to be a part of anything. He's got to go get it right. He's got to go get it fixed, and then somewhere along the line, he'll restart his uh, major league baseball career. So I don't know. I'm happy. You're not going to take. You're not going to knock I'm it out of me. I'm not trying to knock you down at all. I mean, you started out with such negativity, well, it's, and no, I came in with such positivity. Yeah, I understand. But you know, we, as you know, you know, really, it's about the postseason with the uh, with the hockey and the basketball, and that's what we're looking forward to. And I know that you're happy right now, and I know you're gearing up for the playoffs. Oh, I am stuff. like locked in right now. You have I, no idea. You have no I do, idea. I actually do have very much of an idea how much you are I, locked in. I'm drinking in. coffee at midnight last yeah, night. Well, that seems unhealthy for you at that point because you got to get up and all of this. Hey, whatever. Um, I don't really care. I, I'm not. I, I am. I am so thoroughly engaged and and uh, just so like uh, amazed at what I'm watching that it's it's hard to not want to watch it. Well, of course, good. No, I mean that that's a great feeling as a sports fan. It oh, is. God, it is. Yeah, and it's all going to come down to doing better than you did last year in the postseason, and that's going to be a, a, a tall order for sure, but uh, they look like they are trending in that direction. Uh, but really, I guess, you know, the off season. And it's not just about, I know you're like, I don't want to talk about Frankie Monta. We're never going to say his name again. You're right. Today's probably going to be the last day that we're going to say his name unless we're referencing other Brian Cashman disasters. That's when, that's when we're going to do We're going to do when Brian Cashman's name comes up. Right. And, and be he'll like, be Montas. on this long list of duds. Yeah, which I believe CBS Sports Network has a graphic of oh, long already? list of duds. Yeah, they already have long list of duds. I How saw about- that this morning when I was uh, in here and I looked up at the uh, the monitor and it was like Brian Cashman pitching disasters. Uh, there was Jared Wright in there and Carl Pavano in there and Kay Agawa in there. Uh, there you go. Sonny Gray, Kevin Brown, Jeff Weaver. You throw Montas in there as well. Oh, why, throw you throw, uh, you know, why don't you have a list starting with, I don't know, uh, Roger Clemens. Why don't we have a list starting with Randy Johnson? I don't know. You know, why don't you have these other Randy lists? Randy Johnson really did. There wasn't much well, whatever, there Whatever, but why, you know, Yankees. he's done... Uh, the thing, the thing about it is, and I'm, I don't want to get into the weeds with Yankee fans one day into freaking spring training already. They're not a here's great the, offseason. Here, here's the point. Why don't you put up the list of the amount of winning seasons that Brian Cashman has had? Why don't you put up the list of amount, of, amount of uh, playoff mm. appearances that Brian Cashman has had? And then compare that to the list of our team, the New York Mets. 
Oh, well, of course, yes. I mean, we know that the history of the Yankees is uh, is much greater. We understand. But the standard for them is, is championship every year. They've fallen short of that. And he, we actually talked about this the couple days that you were out, you know, with his quote about how, you know, we, we had this great season and we won all these games and we won the division. We fell just a little bit short. And you would have thought the way the fan base reacted that we missed the playoffs. I mean, you got swept by the Astros. You barely squeaked by the Guardians. So what are you talking about? This was not a great season for them. And bringing Aaron Judge back was imperative. They were able to do that. They brought in Rodon, who's another guy who's dealt with a ton of injuries throughout his career. So we'll see what happens with him. And you still got Aaron Hicks and Josh Donaldson starting. So what did you really do in this offseason to make this team all that much you better? You signed Aaron Judge to a $360 million contract. To make contract this team what you better. Did. To make this but, but team you, you better. Can't, I mean, I mean, better I, when I, you're I, that far away from the Houston Astros, you got to get better. Got to get better. You got to get younger. Is what you need. You need. You got to have young players develop, and you got to have young players turn into great players like Aaron Judge. That's what you need. More of those guys. Yeah, and you got to have those guys. Just like every football team has to have those guys. Those Isaiah Pacheco type guys. Sure. That nobody expected anything from, and then all of a sudden, as the season goes on. The young man from Rutgers steps up and it becomes a central figure in the running game for the Kansas City Chiefs out of nowhere, making no money. Who is that for the New York Yankees? Matter of fact, who is that for the New York Mets? <laughs> well, hopefully Francisco Alvarez. That's the uh, Brett Beatty. Those two guys. Those, yeah. those are the guys that you want to see contribute in a big way. And for the Yankees, I mean, is it is it Volpe? Is it Peraza? Uh, you know, th- those two guys, I would think, would be you'd have your eyes on them. And How I about think- Cabrera. Yeah, yeah, and he's he's got great. An Oswaldo and an Oswald. Right, where's Oswaldo and uh, Cabrera? He had a tremendous year last year, bouncing around all the utility stuff. So it could be him as well. Uh, but I just, do you feel like they got that much better? Steve, well, actually, I, with I, the Mets too, I don't feel like they got that much. No, better. well, you know what? They they kept their best players is what they did, and they paid their best players. They played Brand Brandon Nimmo. They paid Jeff McNeil. You know, they're going to end up paying Edwin Pete Diaz. Alonso. They yeah. paid Edwin Diaz. They brought in Verlander. They're still paying Scherzer. I mean, I mean, he's spending money. Let's face it. It's ridiculous. I mean, I, I, I love sailors, but, you know, the old term that he's spending money like a drunken sailor. I understand that because I've seen drunken sailors in New York City and yeah. I've watched them spend money. Fleet Week. A lot, of, a lot of money being spent at local in, yeah. bars and stuff right. like that. It's like, hey, screw so, it. I, I, like, I know it's a, you know, it's a... Uh, it's a saying that maybe some people might find to be offensive, but it's not really that offensive. offensive. It's not. It the drunken be. sailor, the sailor finds that offensive? Sometimes the sailors find that wow. offensive. I didn't know that the sailors got politically correct. I thought it was like a, bad, a badge of honor. Oh, yeah, for sure. Exactly. Wait, so our owner is spending money like a drunken sailor. Yeah. So he can fix anything, spend him any amount of money. And he basically brought back a lot of the same team with the exception of Verlander. That's right. And, uh, and DeGrom. So, well, and he added to the bullpen. I, well, which which he should have done exactly, and he which, was trying to add to the to the infield, and then of course Correa's uh, you know failed his physical. Yeah. So I mean he's trying to do everything he possibly can. Now the Yankees are not keeping up in that area when it comes to spending money like that. No, no, they are not. And no, they but then again, not. nobody is. No, it's just Steve Cohen. But that's the frustrating thing, though, about this team and for the Mets is going into the season they've got far and away the best payroll. But if you go pound for pound and then division are they that much better than the Phillies or the Braves if at all and it's hard to say yes well you have the best closer in baseball Mm -hmm. you'd like to think assuming that they they last and you know the baseball season as we all know it's a marathon it is not a sprint G it's it's, I've told you this a thousand times it's like a 40 mile bike tour it's it's kind of like that yes Yes. and you have to realize that you got to keep these guys as healthy as you possibly can maybe a rest day here rest day there but uh, you know you got two top guys at the the top of the rotation they're going into the Hall of Fame okay you got you got a the best closer in baseball you have a solid hitting team you don't have a what I would say, an over, overwhelming offensive team, but you have a good, solid offensive team. You know, now it's come down to how do you play defense? Yeah. You know, are we throwing the ball all over the place or are we actually catching it and throwing it and throwing it to the right spots? And that's where the manager comes in. Yeah. Right? That's Buck Showalter. Damn right it is. Second year of Buck. I mean, it's going to be. It'll be difficult to recreate 101 wins this year, but 
Who really cares? I mean, as we saw, doesn't matter. You get into the postseason, you get hot at the right time of the postseason, well, timely the hitting, all of those things that we talk about in baseball. So I don't even care if they don't win the division again this year, even though you get the bye. It's not like that's some sort of lock that you're going to move on to the NLCS or the ALCS if you get the bye. It's just start playing well when it matters. And by the way, you know, I think uh, our young men on that are wearing the uh, royal blue and orange and white mm. uh, uh, have taken – heed and, and gotten themselves healthier i see a lot of healthy guys down there now. healthy i don't see a lot of fat slobs playing no. baseball anymore well, vogelback too even lost some weight How about pete alonzo pete alonzo looks great he does now, now it, he was never a fat slob no but i mean he was big he was but thick. now but now but now he looks like he's really taken to like taking care of himself and maybe they won't get nearly as tired as the season goes on because they're overweight and, uh, I mean, he looks great. And it's the best he's looked. I would agree with that. I saw this video yesterday, and I agree. I was thinking that the same thing. that means he's going to be quicker at first base, so much better defensively. Sure. And uh, I would like to think that Vogelback is not going to have a heart attack on the field. <laughs> yes, let's hope not, because so I, that would I, that, be tragic. What that is, that's guys applying themselves, and I like that. Yeah, and I think that last year with the bad taste in their mouth and the way that the season ended, it gives you a little more motivation in the offseason. Say, how can I get better? That's right. How can I not go 0 for 4 in the most important game of the year? Look, we got a long. We should, we are just getting started, man. Yeah, I know. And I know the Yankee fan feels like, okay, the Frank, you weren't you weren't counting on Frankie Montas anyway. Stop it. Oh, but, you guys but, hated Frankie Montas last year. You wanted him out of here this year, and now he's out of here. But he was supposed to be a big cog. Yeah, but in now the rotation, he's out of here. Big cog. Doesn't matter. Lost the cog. Doesn't matter what the cog does, cog that. It doesn't matter. You lost the cog. Yeah, man. they lost the cog. They, they did. There was supposed to be a cog this year, and you lost them. So uh, I, why would anybody think for in their right mind after yeah. what they witnessed last year that this guy was going to be a piece of the cog? <laughs> Oh, can, can you tell me right. why? I, I, I don't. This this would be the this argument. Be like saying that Zach Wilson is going to be the cog of the Jets nah, next year. a little bit different because Frankie Frank, Montas was terrible for last the year. Yankees, but he had a really good year leading up to it with Oakland, and then prior Oakland, to that, nobody goes to the games, nobody cares. Doesn't you know, matter. He's still, you get he's still somebody pitching. from Oakland, you're like, you know what? They, do they know what pressure is? Do they know what what it means to, that every freaking fan is on every freaking pitch that you're throwing? They're not, I don't know but, that. Re, but remember, you come here. when they made the trade for him last year, Brian Cash was talking about having a legitimate number two. This isn't even Cortez is the number two. Shouldn't be even the number one. But a number two in there to bring him in, and that would be his ceiling in the rotation. And then he was terrible, and now he's gone. So, so. For, for every, you know, Frankie Montaus, yeah. there, there's a Nelson Cortez. Nestor Cortez. I mean, yes. Nestor. Yes. Nelson, Nestor. Nasty Nestor. Nasty Nestor. So, a Nestor Cortez. That's Am I right? right? That is who's got a hamstring injury. Oh my God! Oh, really? by the way, season's over. Season's it's just, over. I mean, it's it's just, just going to be one of those dropping injury, like flies. It's going to be like one of those injury plagues, you know, years for the Yankees. It just feels like it, doesn't it? I, I mean, and you think about well, Garrett Cole's always pitches, so he's going to pitch. But then after that, it's like Severino's always hurt. Right. Cortez has got a hamstring. Montas is out for the year. Carlos Rodona, they brought in as a guy who always gets hurt. Eh. But he's not hurt yet, though. Not yet. He's not hurt yet. That's don't not make a yet. Him, don't, don't, it's like know, DeGrom. Maybe this is one of those years where he actually f- makes it through without being hurt. Well, let's hope so, because they gave him a whole bunch of money, and they absolutely need him, especially now uh, with the news yesterday. But, I, I heard all this news yesterday about Frankie Montas and everything else. And I was just thinking to myself, you guys hated him last year. You didn't even really want him here. Well, and that's not true. That, and to think that you or anybody else, you're not a Yankee fan. No. But the Yankee fans around here think that he would be a cog. Well, it just, to me, doesn't make any sense. Well, I'll tell you why. Because he was really, really good prior to that trade deadline. And yes, he came here and struggled. They realized he had an injury. He thought maybe if he rehabs, gets healthy, he can come back and then be that guy for the Yankees. I mean, you know, there was a glass half full with the guy. Stop, and now the stop, glass stop. Is, now the glass stop. is broken. You want to know who a cog is? Who's a cog? Jalen Brunson is a cog. He's a cog. That's a cog. That. That's what you're talking about that right there. Cog. Jalen Brunson is the freaking man. He is. Love That's watching a, that guy. And so the point being yeah. is like, those are the types of cogs you need. Mm. Guys that you come in, they come in here as free agents. You identify them. You end up losing the draft pick because you, you, you messed around and you shouldn't have been messing around. But you still got the guy you wanted. And that guy has proven to be night in and night out the exact thing that Julius Randle and his team have been missing. Now, 
when we get into the the real big games against the really good teams, you, you'll know. We we all know where the the, the Knicks are not going to be able to match up with these uh, these other really good teams. Yeah, but they are, you know, out of out of the entire league, they I would say that they're very very close to being the top ten team. The entire league, you're the entire saying. league, they're very close to being a top ten team, especially with now adding heart to this mix. And I didn't realize, like you know, you, you don't see these kids until you see them every game, and then they put the uniform yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm not expecting you to watch in Josh Hart every night. No, but I forgot how good he was. Yeah, I mean, it especially fits right in with the coach. He's an effort guy. He's a defense guy. I mean, it's the 100 percent sort of the right type of attitude for this team in the city. What I want from them is a cog. A cog. He could be a potential cog. Yeah, Yeah. good start. Good start for him. Could be a cog. One hundred percent cog. I want to see them in the four or five. That's where I want to see them range. Give me the four seed or the five seed. That they need to get that. And you know, now that they have a now they have a long period of time off. Now as we head into the All Star break. Oh man, they're playing great right now. Now comes the All Star break. Yeah, it's fine though. I I don't I don't I don't mind that at all. I mean, I, I really think this is the best record they had at All Star break in a very very long. I know time. that, and, so. the, and well, and you know why? Because they finally have a freaking point guard. That's right. You know, one one of the better ones in the league. That kid, that you know, is he going through the All Star game or no? Uh, as of right now, no. So there could I want be him to a- rest, man. He play. It looks like he plays. I agree. He That's plays so freaking hard every game. That's what I'm saying. That's why I don't mind the break right now. You see some of those offensive rebounds he was getting last yeah, night? Yeah, I mean, that's that's what he does. He does everything. I mean, he's got such a sense. And he's six foot one, and he's getting rebounds from six foot ten guys. Well, because he knows. I mean, he just has that sixth sense on the court. He just knows where everything's going to be, where he needs to be to contribute. He's been amazing. I can't say enough good things about the guy. Cog. Cog in the wheel. Yes. Boomer and Geo on the fan. 